And we need to get back to that. So, and these kids see this. So what I'm saying, I'm not being, I'd just sit down and read them the Bible. And it'd bore them out of their head. I wouldn't explain that, and I'd just go to reading. And I'd say, you need to go take a bath? Yeah, well, come on back. And I'd go with them. So, but I had a little boy over there, and he was meaner. That dude was mean, boy. I'm just telling you, he was mean. He was worse than them skate kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was worse than my little grandson diving back in baptistry and swimming a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, he got really mad. He, he, he did some things that, that, and I knew his dad went to school with his dad, but he did some things, man, I really had to get on him. It was, it was uh, you just can't allow stuff to go on, certain language to go on. He was, so I got on him, man, he cussed me, and old Ernie Huckleby for everything that we was worth, you know. And, uh, and I said, Corey, I love you, honey. Well, he come back, Sheila and I were janitors. That's one reason I take up Rick. If you ain't never janitor during a church, <laughs> Do it. Pay them one week, Rick. Just pay them. I'll pay them. <laughs> no, no. It's Janerton Church is tough. It's just a tough job, man. But because you'll come into church and you're ready to worship the Lord, somebody say, and you know what's going on. And you go in there and somebody eat an elephant that night and took egg slacks behind it. <laughs> and you get to go clean all that up before church ever starts. Let me tell you something, honey. You ain't no mood to worship the Lord when you get in there. But old Corey knew that I was the janitor. So he, he went there and he took him two big old rows of toilet paper. And I might have told you a story. If I did, I'm getting old. I, I, I tend to say stuff twice, you know. But he packed that down there like a muzzle loader, you know. And man, he went to town on top of it, you know. You wasn't no flush in that. That was hand dug. So I get my gloves up to my elbows. And I'm telling God, as soon as I get this cleaned out here, I'm done with you, church, and Corey. I mean, this is it. We, Sheila and I went in there and we cleaned that up. And I thought, when I catch that little rascal, I'm going to kick his rear end up around his head and I'm going to tie a knot in it. And he came up the iron and God said, no, you're not. I grabbed him. I hugged him. I said, Corey, I love you, buddy. How you doing? He looked at me just as funny. I never mentioned that to Corey. Never fussed about it. Never said a thing. Just me and Sheila knew about this. Ten years later, right before we left Loveland, there was a young man walked in that church carrying a little baby and wanted Oliver to baptize him. He come up, I had to want a leader to come and get me. Big old about six foot five boy that was about this tall when I last remembered him. And he come up and he hugged me and he told me he loved me. He said, I've given my life to the Lord because of one us. Now we could have run him off of that church. We, could, we had every right to run that kid away. But we held on, we loved on him, and he got saved. As far as I know, he's, he's still living for the Lord today, I hope. you know. But so just remember that little prayer. <laughs> just remember, salvation comes through some of the toughest ways. And just don't take that janitor job from me. Trust me, you don't want it. <laughs> you don't want it. But uh, real quick, let's go to the Lord in prayer. With, and let's take it, our prayer request to the Lord. Now, we'll, uh, like I said, we are going to have a little meeting downstairs. And I appreciate the church doing that. You didn't have to do that. I'm slimming down. I do need to gain a little bit. So, yeah. yeah. But I uh, uh, got a call from LG. LG is in the hospital with, with COVID and a little bit of pneumonia. Uh, Cody called me a while ago. Cody and Michaela's got it. A bunch of people got this COVID. So just be praying. I've had pre- people all y'all, we're, we can't shut down again, guys. We can't do it. Now, use your own judgment. Please use your own judgment on this. We don't want to put anybody, we don't want to put anybody in, in, in harm's way, okay? And if you got, if you feel uncomfortable, then, you know, that's the reason we got Facebook. Now, I'm not giving you a stay-at-home ticket, but, but I just don't think the church, and I'm not talking about Glen Oak, I just don't think the church can take another shutdown. I just don't think it can do it. There's too many people out of church now. Uh, so... Uh, We'll do something. We got a big old tent. We have to. We'll put the tent up out in the yard. And we'll go outside if that's what it takes. Uh, but either way, we're going to continue on. And I pray every God that, that every day that God will just put His hand on His church and cleanse it and touch you all and protect protect us. You know. So, but be praying for them. Um, who else called me to pray? Oh gracious. Amen. Play for Brother James. Uh, somebody else. I'll remember mine in a minute. Well, God's good. Yes, Tammy Palmer's mom. That is who I think. See, that's for you. Thank you. Thank you. So be praying for them. And I think her dad may even have a little bit of COPD. So 
uh, and pray for Tammy and Daryl, man. They faithful people and love the Lord, you know, and just that, that, that God will give them strength. Um, someone else. Amen. Someone else. How's uh, David doing? He's in, he's in the rehab. Not the rehab place, but the physical therapy. Yeah. Floor. And uh, he's, he's pretty clear that he just he just didn't, didn't feel emotional. Uh, so he still needs prayer. But we're coming along. Amen. The Lord's working. Glory to God. Amen. Boy, I tell you, that young man's been through it. I, I still believe David, and I'm just I'm just claiming he's going to be standing here giving us word off of that, you know. So, yeah, well, just keep believing. I mean, I, I'm I'm just that's my hope, you know. That's my hope. Yeah. Yeah. Bless his heart. Someone else. Amen. Amen. Yep. Amen. Amen. That's that's good preaching, Roger. That's good preaching, and we do need to pray for our country. Um, well, the Bible says in the Book of James, a double-minded person is unstable in all of their ways, and and that's in everything they do. They can't keep the thought and. I didn't remember a whole lot about Watergate and no Nixon. I did a study and wrote a big report on it one time because it kind of fascinated me. And for them to call for his resignation and not call for his joker's resignation, yeah. I'm sitting there going, <laughs> the way, just to pray, pray, pray. The Bible says pray without ceasing. Men, that's what we're going to do. We're going to learn to pray. That's what this whole men's thing's about is getting us as men back to God. And being the leaders, that's that's this is the shirt we got, by the way. I don't know if you can see it. Sister Trisha in here tonight, but it's uh, uh, be the man God called you to be. Man up, Amen. Be the man. Now you know a lot of women. You think, well, does that mean no, 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 no? But God did call the men to lead. Is is God's spirit uh, equal with women? Absolutely. Is the king? Absolutely. But God called us to lead, and people will look to a man to lead. Um, there's a reason for it. So it's time to man up and, and show people where, you know, if, uh, if me and old Roger come in here and we're uh, sucking our thumb every time we come in because somebody made us a little mad or something, well, you all are going to, in other words, people go as their leadership goes. Read the book of Hosea and you'll find that out. They'll go as your leadership goes. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, yeah, the world gets tiresome, but I, I know at the end of it, I win. <laughs> so. But, but please be praying. Somebody else. Amen. Amen. Yes, and it is. We are. I mean, and that's an ever. That's an ever. <laughs> I got a thing, and Sheila, we didn't order it. I hope he was. We didn't order it carpet. <laughs> we need to order it carpet. <laughs> Just hit me. Sorry. I got a thing. I'm working for a government job, and we got a call, and they said, "Listen, we're we're going to with, withdraw, and you, we're going to give you the right because they wanted us to carry a card with us that we had been uh, what are you vaccinated, and." I'm not carrying a card and proving to somebody that I've been vaccinated. I just don't feel that I have to do that. Uh, so I withdrew, and, uh, you know, and they're, they're kind of going to try to make this about money. Now, listen, I'm not against the vaccination. I, if you, you know, and I'm not against masks. 
we're in a time, man, you've got to do what you feel like is right, just like she's saying. And don't bash somebody because they wear a mask or bash them because they don't. Don't bash somebody because they got a vaccine and you don't think it's right. Don't bash somebody because they didn't get a vaccine. I mean, it's, we're really in, literally in a time that you really, and Sheila and I has really been praying about direction that God would have us to go in this. I don't want to, I don't know. I have been going to the doctor and I've still got antibodies. So hopefully that'll sustain me for another day or two till I can figure out what to do. But, but I don't, I'm not going to let them tell me that I've got to carry something to prove something to them. I'm not going to do that. So, but that got abolished today. It got abolished today. That's what I'm saying. I forgot to order the car. <laughs> but uh, we, we got to pray, guys. We are the land of the free. We, we fought for freedom. Freedom wasn't given to nobody. And what I don't understand about America at this point is what we got is a bunch of people, young people, as Daddy used to say, well, I ain't going to say what Daddy used to say, but let's just put they ain't got an area of sense. Yeah, they're sport rotten, they grew up on a Nintendo, amen, they grew up wearing designer jeans, design, had many pair of them, they were given all the money they need to week without working, they were never taught any ethics, they were never taught, I remember the worst, one of the worst whoopings I ever got in my life, we was at some friend's house and she put on a, put a big old plate of biscuits out there, and I, I was just this big, man, and I grabbed one of them biscuits, went and ate my mama, I, I'm no ma'am, yes sir, you got Now, kids that think they know everything and they don't even know how to tie Then they're telling all these people like uh, our leader <laughs> that don't know what he's doing <laughs> all their ways. So that, that's kind of where we're at with that. But, but please be courteous with this. And, you know, you feel like you need, uh, the, the, don't, tells me when these things don't. I don't know, man. I mean, there are three or four of them shots. Booster me four or five. Oh, Kenny, I'm, and some of them will, uh, that stuff could be mean to you, can't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, so I'm not, unless it's Jonah and Caleb, some of them, young, look how big our young boys. Their hair ain't gray. It whooped them too. <laughs> and theirs a lot bigger than ours. <laughs> yeah, well, Rick, yeah, he, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rick, Rick. <laughs> but either way, do, do how you feel you need, you're led to do, okay? And please quit bashing everybody for it. And like she said, if a mom and dad feels like their kid needs to be in a mask, let them wear a mask. If they feel like they don't need to be in a mask, well, that's fine, too. Do your separation thing and do your best to prevent it. That's all we can do, guys. Somebody else didn't mean to get into all that. Go ahead, Bill. Bless your heart. Pray for this. Pray. I've got a uh, pastor friend named Frank Cannon. He's actually the preacher that married me and Sheila. Uh, his oldest daughter was Debbie. Christy, was Teresa older or Debbie? Who's the oldest? I don't want to say. I think Teresa was oldest. Yeah. But either way, she passed away, and I don't. It's We're just pray for them. That's got to be devastating. And then uh, Sister Becky Hundley. Don Hunley, I, I went over yesterday and helped conducting that funeral. And, of course, his church. I got to talk to Mike and, and, and Shirley. And we need to be praying for their church. And if we can, you know, guys probably get with you deacons to see how you want to. But they, uh, they're in a financial bind with that. They got some of the family members. It's people's helping, but that's a, that's a big expense. And, I mean, we can't pay for a burial, but if we could give a $10 bill, it would definitely help them, you know, so... Maybe get with you guys and see how we want to do that. And uh, if you want, I'm just going to go ahead and deacons forgive me and 
uh, chastise me in the meeting if I do it wrong, but, you know, tonight if you feel like that you could help old uh, Don and Becky out, you know, uh, I don't think he had any life insurance, I'm not sure, but, you know, so, uh, and please just pray for Becky, she's still in the hospital on the ventilator, I mean, she didn't get to attend her husband's funeral, so it's a sad situation, and Mike, if we can help him out, we will, just uh, please keep them in your prayers. Someone else, done praying, everybody's going to do the singing. You know, either that or me and Bill Lyford and Roger can sing, you know. Rick, Rick and O.M. can carry the chorus. Yeah, let's stand and pray. You guys come on and sing for us once we're done. We've met here tonight to worship the Lord. Um, if you need prayer, the altar's open. Amen. If you need to come just have a little talk with Jesus tonight, we'll do that. It'll make you feel better. Amen. It'll make you feel better. Brother Roger Socks, will you take us to the throne of grace? Father, I come to you tonight. God, I'm so thankful, Lord, for this sweet hour of prayer, Lord. God, I ask you, Lord, before I ever come to your throne of grace, God, that you'd forgive me, Lord. Cleanse me, God, and make me, God, what I need to be. God, I'm reminded so often of the song that was written many years ago, Lord. It's not my brother nor my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer tonight. God, help me, Lord, tonight to bring my thoughts into captivity, Lord. To set my mind and my emotions, Lord, my everything on you, Lord. God, help us tonight, Lord, as the word you show me in your word, Lord, to affix my eyes on you, Lord. God, we've heard many requests tonight, Lord, from the sick and the ones that's passed away, Lord, that you'd comfort those families. That, God, you would take this COVID, Lord, and you would just bind it. That, God, that you would just take it out of the place, Lord. God, as Roger has, has requested so greatly, Lord, God, be with our country. Lord, help us, God, and forgive us, Lord, where we failed you, Lord, and we've turned our back on you, Lord. And, God, we've made a mockery of your word, Lord, in our standings, Lord. God, help us to retrieve ourselves back to the foundations that we were built on, and that's the principles of your holy word. This while we can find you, Lord. Help us, Lord, while you're near. Lord, I know there's some of us, Lord, we're facing things and in our life, and there's things that goes on in our mind, Lord, that we keep contained right there between us and you. God, I pray tonight you would relieve the fears, Lord, that, God, you would clean the conscience, Lord, that you would clean the thoughts and the minds and the fears that dance around in our heads so often, Father. God, I know you teach us tonight, Lord, what we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and what we loose on earth tonight shall be loosed in heaven. So, Lord, help us, God, to tie some things up and turn some things loose. Jesus, we know, God, that you're in control. Lord, help me, God, take me out of the way and let me understand 100% that you're in control. And, God, when you're in control, I have nothing to worry about, nothing to fear. God, I pray for some, Lord, that's needing financial blessings. That, God, that you'll just open up the windows of heaven, Lord, and just pour a blessing on them. That, God, that you'll relieve their worries and their fears. Oh, Jesus, help us now to trust you, to acknowledge you, to lean on you, and to direct us. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. Thank you for seeing fit to save me. Jesus, I know if you could save me and my old evil thoughts and minds that I was, you can save anybody. I love you, Lord. Holy Spirit of God, have your way tonight. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Come right ahead and sing now. Thank you, sir. Man, God, I won't sit next to him. He's smart out of Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, grunt. Come on, baby. He made his plea. 
shone down from heaven and did shine over me. Yeah, glory. I stumbled to the ground. Yeah. As though I were dead. Then he finished his story, and here's what he said. Yeah, praise the Lord.
What a mighty God we serve. <laughs> Amen. Oh, God's wanting to bless you if you'll just open it up tonight. Jericho. 
Man, did that scare me. Golly, yeah. That's, that was go ahead, brother. Jericho was dead. That's what they sung about in that song about Jericho. When, when, if, when you go, when the Lord sends me or you to Jericho, he'll be there with us. Did he meet Elijah there at Jericho? Yeah. Or at Jordan, I'm sorry. He met him there at Jordan. Jordan, yeah. And he took him up in a, in a whirlwind. Oh, yeah. yeah. The Lord, he's a man. Driving a Cadillac. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, glory. So when, when we have to go to Jordan, Kenny, it, it, it's going to be a, it's going to be a good time for us. Now, I'm not going to go right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, went on, I went on the last bus if I can. But uh, if, when I go to when I go to Jericho, the Lord's going to be there with me, meet me there. He, he's going to be there. Simple as that. Amen. He, he was with Elijah. He's going to be with us. Amen. Good job. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so very much. Amen. Well, that's good stuff. You know, uh, now praise God. That I'm saved tonight. I deserved hell, Roger. That's all I deserved. Uh, yeah, there ain't nothing good in me but God. <laughs> hey, man, I was thinking there, you know, when I was growing up, ran into some of Daddy's friends, you know, that say, that's Lewis's boy. <laughs> you know, Lewis Skates' boy. Or, you know, but when they go to, woke up and they look up, God will say, that's my son. <laughs> that's my son amen my goodness I tell you right now if that don't get you wood to burn then it must be wet uh, I'm telling you I'm glad I'm saved I want to give you just a I'll preach pretty quick tonight because when they say sweets I say make it short and sweet yeah Sheila I've told you before you know she'll hold up that sign every now and then you know it says kiss on it and I think well good if I do good I'll get me some sugar after church and, and that ain't what it means. It means keep it short and sweet. <laughs> God, she's ready to get out of here. <laughs> now, now, your Sheila don't never do that, does she? No. <laughs> she just bust you in your mouth if you go to. <laughs> well, Glory, tonight I want to give you a thought. Are you looking past your problems? Can you see past your problems? Can you see past your fears, your worries, your anxieties? Can you see past the grave? Tonight, I want to go in and very familiar scripture, and you'll you'll catch on real quick the thought that God's given me tonight. But I want to give us the ability to see beyond everything that keeps us in bondage. He has given us the power to know we can see through the clouds and know the sun shining. Amen. You say, well, I don't uh, like when all that rain come down. I thought, man, I'm sure glad I wasn't there. We need to pray for them pool folk down there, man. They, I think the hall of New Orleans was without fire, you know. If they don't get some of that uh, idolatry worship out of down there, God love will worship them out in the ocean down there, you know. But but these good people down there, we wanna we wanna keep them in our prayer. But I was thinking all that rain, I thought, man, I'd hate to be in and these poor folks down in West Tennessee, you know. Now that rain come through, something as innocent as rain can be so devastating, and you can't hardly see past it. But a lot of times the reason we're not successful in our walk with God and the reason we're not happy people, and this is you pastor. Now you pastor, this is one of the messages I get to sit down and listen to myself preach. Amen. The reason we are not obtaining what we want to obtain in God and what we want to obtain in our walk, walk with God and, and be successful. Now we're going to have problems, guys. I've told you, Job told you, the Bible's told you, every preacher's told you. The, the days down here, a man born a woman is, is short and it's full of trouble and sorrow. It's just... It just is. I mean, if you ain't got problems, you'll have them before you die. Trust me. Um, if you can live problem-free, then would you please write a book? <laughs> I'll buy it. <laughs> but no, we often we get hung up, and we can't see past our problems. So I want to read you a little scripture, not very, very, very familiar. It's found in Luke chapter 24. And it goes on, and I'm just going to skip over it. But this is at the resurrection of Jesus when Mary and Martha, they went down. You know the story. The tomb was empty. They went back. They told Peter and John. They ran down to the scepter. They said it's empty. But there was... Amen. And I, want, I want to pick up uh, just a little short piece of the scripture here and show you that these guys could not see past their problems. Now, when the problems of life or the problems of fear of death will face every one of us one day concerning... We go through rapture, and even if the rapture, the Bible says you'll be changed in a moment, a twinkle of an eye, this body is going down to sin. I mean, it's going down. I pray it's in the rapture so I don't have to go through a bunch of uh, stuff, but, 
But if not, either way, this body is going to be changed. This body as I know it, the, the life I know it right now, is not going to exist forever. It's the next part. It's seeing past the grave that's going to exist forever. So tonight, I want you to get courage in the Lord. I want you to understand the Word of God. I want you to understand the power of the blood of His resurrection. That through this, we can see past the grave. Hallelujah to God. I remember they used to... Uh, a lot of the Egyptians would embalm because they felt like they had to preserve that body for the soul to re-enter it one day. Now you'll only find a couple of folk in the Bible that it talks about embalming. The, the Egyptians were bad to embalm. Uh, the, the Hebrews didn't do a lot of embalming because they weren't allowed to touch dead bodies. So you died, man. They, they come here and throw some stuff on and make you smell good. After you got stinking real good, you probably on your own. But... I want you to know tonight that there's life past your problems. There is joy past misery. There's laughter past crying. There's rejoicing after being mad. There's there, there the things that's tying us down. There's a freedom past our bondages. And it only lays in Jesus. And I want you to know that Christ is always walking with you. But you've got to recognize that He is the one that can take you past what you're looking at. Now watch this in this scripture. We're going to start reading at verse 13 and I'll be 10 minutes. <laughs> Give me 10 minutes. <laughs> well, I'm, yeah, thank you, Bill. I thought he was on my side. No, I'm just aggravating Rick tonight. We won't elaborate. <laughs> verse 13, and behold, two men the, and behold, two of the men, or two of them went. That same uh, day to the village called Emmaus, which is from Jerusalem, about three furlings long, three score furlings long. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and re uh, reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. So what they're doing, they're, they heard the story that the tomb is empty, they've not seen Jesus, they... That, but you know what they're doing? They're, they're reasoning. They're going back and saying, you remember them good old services we used to have at Glen Oak Baptist Church? You remember when this and that and this and that and they're, they're dribbling along and they're... Let me tell you something, honey. You can't live off of yesterday's bread. God is a brand new loaf every day. God's got something brand new for you every day. And if I can't get nothing but still in your head in this church, if it takes me the rest of my life or the last terms of my being a pastor at this church, God has called every one of you to a purpose. You've got to find that purpose and get into that purpose. And God will use you and you'll be happier than you've ever been in your life. The reason a lot of us are not working into the purpose of God is because we don't want to lay down the, the pleasures of the flesh to do it. Amen? It's going to require a little bit. But I want you to see these guys, they, they, they've heard it. That Jesus taught them. He taught in, even in the in the in the temple. They come up and handed him the scripture of Isaiah that we read the other day. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the good news, to take it to the brokenhearted, to to take it to the sick, to take it to the lame. God has anointed me to preach the good news. They knew who He was, but yet they were walking to Emmaus, saddened and brokenhearted. Now we see Jesus. Drew near to him. Watch what I want to, and I'll be brief with this. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together in reason, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. Their eyes were holding. Their eyes was fixed on the problem. Their eyes was fixed that Jesus is not here to be our safety net anymore. Jesus is not here to take care of us. Jesus, he's not here. Their eyes were set on what had happened instead of what was going to happen. Their eyes was what was set on what he said and not the fulfillment of his word. I'm telling you tonight, children, his word is fulfilling. His word will be fulfilled. It will do what it says it's going to do. It has the power to save the sick. It has the power to save the or raise the dead. It has the power to also it has the power to cast out demons it's not just a word but it's a fulfilling word and all they had their mindset on was the word they couldn't see the fulfillment of the word they were affixed their eyes were on all of their problems oh oh now what are we going to do oh my goodness we're without oh my goodness this didn't happen oh my goodness oh my goodness oh my goodness and jesus was walking right there with them hallelujah to god i want to tell you tonight yeah you're probably walking toward emmaus 
Yeah, you've probably heard the word, but you're not seeing the fulfillment of the word yet. Hang on, little buckaroo, it's coming. And just hang on to Jesus, because I'll assure you, He's right there with you, just like we said Sunday morning. As the trouble come in the ship, and the waves overtook it, and the disciples got scared, Jesus was right in the boat with them. Hallelujah to God. And He will sustain you. Kenny, I've never been through nothing that Jesus didn't sustain me. I've never went through a problem that He didn't solve. I've never had a trouble that He didn't take care of. I've never been in nothing that God has not been with me. Now, things may not have went the way I wanted it to go in ministry. Very young in the ministry, I was going to have Billy Graham to come and evangelize for me. And as I went to the church, my mind was set. I told Sheila, I got my little old toilet. I said, I'm going to take this church. This church is mine. And I said, Oliver, let me, let me rephrase. I've been preaching about five years. I just never got an opportunity to preach for the first four of them. But I went in and I said, Oliver, this church is calling me, man. I said, oh, he said, Danny, you're not ready. Well, shut up. Who are you? You're ignorant. I, I, you know what? God called me too. And I really got upset with Oliver because he told me the truth. He said, you're not ready to pastor, Danny. You're just not ready. He said, your preaching's just fine, but you're not ready to pastor. I said, well, see, no, I'll show him. Not only I'll pastor, I'll get part of his congregation. I'll, I'll proselyte them. I'll give him $100 to that church, and I'm going to take it. I didn't pray about it. I told God, I said, God, get out of the way. I'm taking this church, and there's going to be a bunch of people get saved, and we're going to grow, and it's going to be awesome, and I'm just happy. I could even walk to this church. I was tickled to death. I pulled up in the parking lot. God said, if you take this church, I'm going to give you hemorrhoids. I got hemorrhoids anyway. <laughs> you see, anybody that lays carpet knows what I'm talking about. Mark ain't here tonight. No, he didn't say that. The guy pulled up and God said, don't take the church. I said, God, when is my chance? He said, you're not ready. And you know, we often, we think, well, we didn't. Because he went through this old gray head man, little beady eyes. Thunderations, Danny. I'll never forget him rubbing his nose. You guys that know Oliver, he'd rub that nose and he'd go, thunderations. He said, God's going to use you, but it's not your time. And that's what God told me as I walked to the door of that church and was fixing to sit down in front of that council. And God said, don't take it because you... And you know what? When I got in there, I couldn't take it. And I remember the head of the deacon board come up and he hugged me. He said, preacher, we really wanted you. What will it take to get you? I said, honey, if I come to this church, me and you, one, both of them, not both of us, will end up dying. I can't do it. And I never thought that I'd see past that moment. I said, I'm washed up. God, I've told you and told you and told you I wasn't no account at this. I don't understand it. I don't have the patience. I don't have the love. And the whole time, I was going thunderations. And I could hear that and I could hear something the word of the Lord where I read where it says don't put a novice into position to try to lead and all of the scriptures started fulfilling and just coming in and coming for fruition and I thought God when is my chance 12 years later and it went good it went good and now I got y'all got stuck with me <laughs> y'all must have been mean but I said that to say this. I seen past what I felt like I needed. Or I didn't see past, but God did. God put things in my life. He put people in my life to help lead me. And that's what you need to do tonight. You need to know what you're in right now is very temporary. And there is, there is, there is, there is victory on the other side of your problem. Trust me. There, if God told you he's going to do it, take it to the bank, honey, he's going to do it. Kenny, I don't know where God's life will land you. Honey, you life will be right over in North Carolina serving with Franklin Graham for it over. But whatever he told you as a preacher, he's going to do it, Kenny. I don't know what it might be, but he's going to do it. Amen. So that's what I want you to see this, and I'm going to close. Y'all get a song ready. And the two were walking, and, and they talked together as all these things that happened, and it came to pass, and he was with them. Let's go down to... Uh, uh, verse uh, 16, and I want you to look at verse 16 again. If you got your Bible open where it says, Their eyes were holding that they should not know Him. 
They did not put their eyes on Jesus. Tonight, please put your eyes on Jesus because this world is very temporary. And your prayer tonight should be say, God, let me not to hold my eyes on the things of the world, but hold them on you. Now watch verse 17. And he said unto them, What manner of communication are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? So we see they were in misery. They were upset. They were tore up. Coronavirus was all around them. Their Savior was gone. They didn't know whether somebody stole Him or not, but yet they knew the Word, but they hadn't had the Word revealed. How quickly they forgot the promise. Now watch what Jesus tells them. And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered and said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? Hast not thou known the things which are come to pass there in these days? Are you stupid, boy? That's about, have you not heard what's going on? There was a fellow came and he raised the dead and he brought the very Word of God into the Sanhedrin. He even put it before all of the leaderships of Egypt. He put it for all the Romans. He did great and mighty things. Are you got your head stuck in the sand? He said, no, because I am He. <laughs> well, glory. Verse 19, and he said unto them, what things? about to make it the revelation. He's about to reveal the revelation. Watch it. And he said to them, what things? And they said unto him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God of all the people, and how the chief priest and our rulers delivered him to be condemned death, to death and have him crucified and, and crucified him. But we trusted that it, would, had, uh, that it had been uh, he which should, uh, had been redeemed in Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Now, I apologize for butchering this up. I got this small print. I can't see it. But we trusted, we trusted that it had been the which uh, should have been redeemed in Israel. In other words, we wanted him to come up and put us on top. Honey, he did. And not only Israel did he put on top, but he did the United States, and he did Egypt, and he did everybody else. He gave the whole world a chance to be number one. Now watch this, but they were looking to themselves. What they wanted. Well, hey, I'm ready to pastor. No, you're not. There's something coming that's going to give everybody. Now watch this, i got to hurry. Ye and certain women also, uh, ye and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early of, at the sepulcher, and when they had found not his body, they came saying that they also uh, seen a vision of angels which said uh, that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us, went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Now we're seeking to see the word, the revelation be revealed to these two men. Now watch this. Then he said to them, O fools, <laughs> slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Slow to believe the word. Let me tell you something, honey. They can put anything they want to in a constitution. They can put anything they want to in a law. They can number it every one or two. It'll fail you, but this word right here will not fail you. It will do what it says it's going to do, and it will do it 100%. We don't serve a halfway God. We serve an almighty God. We don't serve a part God. We serve a full God. We don't serve a weak God. We serve a strong God. We don't love, serve a hated God. We serve a God of love. And I'm telling you right Right now tonight, if you will just open your eyes and listen to the Word of God and trust the Word of God, you will see past what you're going through. And you will find out you're going to come out victorious in this. Ought, that ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into this glory. And beginning at Moses and all of the prophets he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. I am the one you're sad about. I'm the one. The laws through it all, honey. I'm the one. I was one that was revealed or concealed in the law, and now I'm revealed in the covenant. Hallelujah. As we stand tonight and sing. And they drew nigh to the village where they went, and he made a, a thought that he would go on further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening. And this day is far spent. And he went into tarry with them. As you see this tonight, I want you to see he, Jesus was going to go on. And they said, no, we, we figured it out. Come in and sit with us a little while. Jesus, we see now. We see now. Our eyes, we forgot. Done. But we see now that you are the Messiah.
You are the Son of God. Come in and tarry with me. So tonight, these guys, God opened their, pro their eyes that they could see past their problems. And they even got to see past the grave because guess what? Three days ago, Jesus was stuck in a grave. Now they even got to see past the grave. Amen. If you're here tonight, you're burdened down. Maybe you're lost. Maybe you don't know Christ as your Savior. I'll tell you there's a place called heaven that's awaiting you that, uh, that, that man can't put into words. And there's also a place called hell that awaits you if you reject the saving grace of Jesus Christ. That man can't put into words the torments that's down there. So if God's convicting your heart tonight and you need to be saved, you get on this altar and don't you tarry. If you're here tonight and you're battling something you can't handle no longer, tonight God's going to let you see past that. He's wanting you to see past that. He's walking right with you. He's going to hold your hand and you're going to get it through. You're going to get breakthrough tonight. It's up to you. Come and get it. As they sing. A little bit today in victory. <laughs> Amen. Of the water Good song. Yes, Lord. Walks by my side in desert drive. Love me and he helped me when I cried. Amen. So let me sing you one more song in case I leave. Amen. What are you looking at tonight? I know how I made it. <laughs> I made it by grace. Well, so slow I now have taken each one by faith. Yeah. Standing on short and stormy shore, I lift my trembling voice once more. I know how I made it. Yeah. I made it by faith. Well, glory. Are you saved tonight? God's children are leaving one by one. Passing this way and going home. Signs Amen. of the time reveals we don't Amen. have very Father, we come to you, Lord, with Jonah, the Lord. God, help him see past, God, his fears, his worries, God. And let him know, God, he's a mighty man of valor tonight. That, God, your anointing's on him, God. That, God, you've called him to be, Lord, what you've taught him to be. And, God, this is only going to last temporary. God, let him know, God, that there's victory on the other side. Thank God that you've got it already in control. And, God, you're right with him. Jonah, God is right with you. Jesus never leaves you and never forsakes you. Oh, go with him, God. Give him confidence tonight, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I love you, brother. God bless you. Amen. Amen. If it gets any gooder than this, I'll be walking on gold. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you all. Y'all have done an awesome job tonight. Even with old Tiger along with you. You know, he... <laughs> I, I love you. I love you. Just come back Sunday. Come back praying.